That's right. So guess what? We are the reason all this stuff is happening to us. We cannot sit here and point the finger to nobody else. We can show you who's doing these things to help keep us oppressed. But guess what? The reason we are in this condition is because we disobey God's commandments. All right. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Let's keep it a notch. How you doing, brother? Can I follow you for a second? Come over, listen to me real quick. We're giving you true understanding of who you really are. Do you understand that you're a God on this earth, brother? Come on over here. Right. We ain't gonna bite you, brother. We ain't gonna hurt you. We're here for you, man. Right. Alright, I'm a rock. So, brother, do you know that you are God on this earth? You know that for a fact. So, what about this? If somebody came around and shot you in your head, would you die? Yeah, okay, but would you just die if somebody shot you in the head? Right. So, give me that in Psalms, baby. I want, I want you to hear something real quick. I want you to understand why I asked you that question. It's, it's far deeper than that. Just saying, okay, yeah, I know I'm a guy. Yes, you are, in fact, a guy. We're going to show you how the Holy Bible. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. Look it up. I have said, ye are God. See that? That's playing in the open right there. God just said, we are gods, right? But why do we die? Let's find out. And all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. See that? God just said we're going to die just like a regular man. Why, why, is it, why do we just die like regular men now? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. We got to understand why we got put in this condition. So we can say, okay, white man this, white man that. Yeah, we know white man's a devil. But why did all this stuff happen? And the Bible explains why slavery happened. The Bible explains why police brutality happens. Right. The Bible explains why inequality happens. The Bible explains why we are considered denizens and not citizens. We are considered three-fifths of a man. Right. You understand? Right. Let me show you how to hold the Bible, how we can how we can fix this, and uh, how we know uh, that we are actually guys on this earth. Right. Do what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So would you consider a curse a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, well in that context, God said, look, <clears throat> if you decide to not do what I'm telling you to do, I'm gonna put curses on you. So would you think that's bad? That's bad, that's a bad curse. That's bad, right? So let's find out a bad curse that God said he will put on his people for disobeying him. Verse 16. Verse 16, curse shall thou be in the city. So right there, have you been out outside of Nashville? A couple times. Like, name some places. Florida, Tampa, I mean Florida, Atlanta, uh, New York, uh, Virginia, that's about it. Okay, so when you go to Florida, Atlanta, and you go to, say, the ghettos, the projects, who do you see living there? You see white people living in there? Yeah. You see a whole bunch of white people living there? Yeah. Or do you see mainly black people? In Atlanta, it's more than majority blacks. It's majority blacks, right? Right. Now you go down there, what, what we got down here? We got uh, Dodge City close by. Who's, who's mainly living down there? Black. black people. You got Edge Hill, who's living down there? Black. You got, what else? We got Casey Holmes. We got the DB, well, uh, Joe, Johnson. Joe Johnson. We got J.C. Napier, who's mainly living there? Black. Is that the best place to live? Is that the, uh, the, uh, uh, what you call it, the, uh, yeah, is that the fatness of the earth? Is that the, uh, the suburbs? Is you living La Vida Loca? <laughs> nah, God said what? Read that again. Curse shall thou be in the city. So you would consider being in that condition outside of living in the suburbs, curse and not a bliss, right? Right. So God said, who, 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 who's living this thing right here? Us, right? Let's read on. And curse shall thou be in the fields. Then he said, and curse shall you be in the fields. Who is this down here? You see this? Big mom right there, big papa doing what? Picking cotton, sugar cane. Was we picking cotton and sugar cane? Was that going into our own pockets? Nope. That was that was going to who? Somebody else, the so-called white man. Right. God said, "Curse shall we be in the field," and that clearly happened to us according to history, right? Right. It's right. It ain't happened to nobody else on the scale that it did 
uh, for us back in, back 400 years ago, right? right. So let's, let's get into further more detail. Give me 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Then God said, look, your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people. That's slavery again, ain't it? So, does that really happen to anybody else on the same scale that it did for us? Was we was anybody else getting sold from one state to another state? Did anybody else get pulled from another continent over to another continent? Bring it out! By the boatloads. Right. History out. proves that. You can still go down deep into the ocean and find the bones of the old slaves. Thousands of them who decide to jump off ship instead of uh, deal with this. You understand? That clearly happened to our people. God said, look, for our disobedience, he was going to put these things on us. And that clearly came to pass. So guess what God has said? We are the people of this book. Right. This book ain't the white man's book. Jesus is not a white man. God is not a white man. God looks just like you, brother. Same skin tone and everything. Jesus looked just like you. Same skin tone and everything. And I can prove it. Let's read on, though. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And we, when we seen our little kids being snatched away from us, we couldn't do nothing to stop them. All we say, Master, please, Master, please, no. He just worry about the money. He finna get a good, cool thousand dollars for your daughter. Mm. And a thousand dollars, probably like a million dollars up, up in this day. You know what I'm saying? Read on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And we had no might to go back and get them. All we can do is sit there and cry. Pray to God, hoping that we can get him back. And there's nothing we can do. You understand? Now give me six days. So this, 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 so far, what I've just read is clear evidence of history, of what we've been through and what we read in the Bible that happened to us, right? It's clear evidence, right? Can you agree? Okay. Let me let me get some clean cut. Read what you got. Six days. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, if you, if you know any etymology on the word Egypt, back in that day, it's, a, it's actually a Greek word translated to bondage or captivity. And we can show you this real quick out of the Bible. Exodus 22, real quick. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. See that? God is saying Egypt is the house of bondage, right? So now read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, what is another word for bondage? Like what is a synonym for bondage? Okay. You know, you know what you know what it means to be bound? You don't know, okay. So <clears throat> Bondage or bound, being bound is the same thing as captivity or slavery. That's so God's right. saying, look, I'm going to send you back into Egypt or slavery again. How? With ships. Who else went into slavery by way of ships? By the millions. Who else? Nobody but us. Nobody. So that's clear evidence that is directly talking about us. These people on this side, back up a little bit. These people on this side right here, brother. All went into slavery by way of ships, including the so-called Hispanic people. Right. They went into slavery on ships too. They got transported by the boatloads over to Spain, Europe, and all over. Uh, and they got uh, where else? From uh, Africa, we got a lot of a lot of people got uh, uh, shipped up down to South America. You know what I'm saying? But they don't they don't teach that history like they do ours. They just swoop that thing under the bricks and say we two different people. We are the same damn people. We are the same people, brother. You understand? Now, let me prove to you. Actually, hold on. Finish this off. Now, I'm going to prove to you what your Lord and Savior really looks like. All right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And right there, it said, and there, once you got out those slave ships in America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, God said you're going to be sold to your enemies. Right. Not to your best friends, not to your homeboys, but to your enemies. So get, what is God calling the man that we was being sold to? Bring it out. Our damn enemy. Yeah, so guess what? Right. If I'm a blood, you're a crip. You really ain't my enemy. If I'm a GD, you're a vice lord. You really ain't my enemy. Teach we are brothers. We cannot be beefing like that. We cannot be gangbanging, shooting, selling drugs, doing drugs, doing all that foolishness. 
We got to stop that. We got to repent and come back to God's commandments. We got to right. act like God's. We can't just say we know God. We uh, we God's. We got to actually act like God's. You understand? Now give me that revelation real quick. One fourteen. Yep. Sorry. About that. So ho hopefully you taking um, what I'm saying to you as knowledge, because it's not just no joke. We ain't out here for show. It's hot as hell. Like it's 97 degrees. We're trying to wake up our people so we can get the hell up out of here. Because God said there's a new kingdom coming. Right. And guess who's going to be ruling? It's supposed to be us. That's and that right. kingdom is not going anywhere. It is going to be reigning forever and ever. And That's if right. you want to be a part of it, you got to take heed to what God has written in this Bible and apply it to your life. If you're in the gang, come out of the game. Right. If you're doing drugs, stop doing drugs. Right. If you're whoring at your women, stop whoring at your women. Get a wife. Right. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out! The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation of who? Of Jesus Christ. So revelation means to reveal, right? So now jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. You hear that, brother? Hey, you hear? You hear what they describe Jesus Christ looking like? What did it say? You weren't listening. Watch this. Read, read verse 13 again. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven goat and the seven candlesticks, one light unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So who got hair like wool? Black people. That's not, is that describing this man right here? Is it describing this man? Not at all. It's describing somebody that will look just like that, in, in a sense. Hair like wool, like a sheep. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, and his what? And his feet. Now, your feet the same color the rest of your body, right? You ain't got no chameleon type feet going on, there. <laughs> All right. So what, what did Christ's feet look like? And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Like a brownish Like a brownish color, right? Let's see how brown Jesus the Christ was. Read on. As if they burn in a furnace. Now you, you throw anything into a furnace, to an oven, and you leave it there too long, what color is it going to be? It's going to be crisp and black. That's right. So guess what? Our Lord and Savior is a dark-skinned black man. Yes, not right. a white man. You understand? So if our people actually knew that thing, guess what Guess what they would do? They wouldn't shoot their brother. Because they say, look, okay, he looked just like Christ. He looked just like Jesus Christ. He looked just like God. Right. I wouldn't rob him. I wouldn't sell drugs to him. I wouldn't do him dirty. You understand? Give me Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Bring it out. Yeah. Because our people got to, like I said again, we're not out here just to, uh, just to uh, be yelling and screaming our people. We're trying to get them to actually apply change to their life. That's, what, that's our true purpose. Is to tell our people, look, you are God's chosen people, and God has a purpose for you on this earth. Right. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing. By doing what? Swearing. They know how people love to say, I oh, man, on God this. I put this on my mama, on my dead granny. Our people love saying that, right? But God said, look, he got a controversy with us because we're doing those things. And I like the letter C. Teach! Bring it out. Sounds foolish as hell, don't it? I mean, well, the, the world's so foolish, man, that it, it's difficult for uh, even those who actually preach the word to actually see uh, what the Lord was fly. willing to actually show fly. people, man. All right, brother. Hit us up. So, I said, uh, the world's so foolish, man, it's, it's actually difficult for the people to actually see what the Lord was actually trying to teach them. Like, right. uh... At one point, like, the Lord is progressing. So once the Lord actually comes and he sees, well, this stuff ain't happening. So it's like, you know what I'm saying, he does pull away from the people. And the truth is, the devil is so busy right now that even the devil knew he had a short time until, you know what I'm saying, the devil could actually use a person's soul to gain strength. So he actually willing to collect souls 
to stay alive. Like, you know, God is not uh, catering to uh, Lucifer's disobedience in heaven. Watch this. Watch this. Get, get Hosea 5 and 15. So what you just said is clear and cut straight out of the scriptures. Read what you got. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Get out. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. See that? That is clear cut out of the scriptures. Guys, say, look, I'm going to back back and let Satan destroy your whole life till you turn back to me. Right. Till you obey my commandments. Do you understand who you are and what's your purpose? God ain't going to defend us unless we obey his commandments. You understand? Right. Uh, finish the King of Judah 5. Read on. And seek my face. And do what? And seek my face. So where do we find God's face? Can we take us a spaceship and go into the third heaven and look at God? And I'll see what, well, it actually talks, it's pretty simple, man. It's simple. It, it, says, it, says, uh, it says, well, Christ came to, to the earth a long time ago. You know, he separated uh, sin from mankind. And, uh, so, you know, he did all that. Simple. So when he returns, he's going to come and you got to explain him. You say he got like wood. Right. It's white. Right. And it's like, when are you going to see his face? Like, talking is one thing. It sounds good. Don't get me wrong. It sounds right. like you really trying to expose <clears throat> to the people, you know, the truth about God. Like, he ain't white, he's black. I, I get that. Right. That makes sense. The truth is. So, what you trying to say? Truth is, are you seeking his face? That's why I'm asking you, if what does it mean? If Jesus, if Jesus walked up on you today, would you at, would you be able to recognize him with all the truth? With if Jesus the, walked up to me today, guess what? Guess what, what happened, brother? So with all the information he got, let me, can let me, you let me ask you If Jesus walked on this earth today, guess what would happen? We would be ruling this earth. That's right. Because right. when Christ makes his second coming, we're not going to be suffering no more. Jesus we're not going to be in ruin. sin no more. Jesus we're not going to be underneath these people no more. Jesus you understand, did, brother? Jesus didn't say you would rule. We, give me that dagger, chapter 7. He said that Jesus would give unto his servants revelation. <laughs> he would show his servants these things that shortly must come to pass. Yeah, read that. It said the Lamb. Check this out, brother. It said the Lamb. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 18. Bring it out. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So guess who the saints are? The take, saints are take us. The take the, the kingdom. Israelites. It is a that's right. So Ruth, if you will listen, brother, brother, if you will listen, we can explain everything. Number nine to listen, brother. Number nine to listen. Take the Read that again. Take the kingdom, but God shall rule. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So the way we're going to take the kingdom, let's go right back to Ephesians chapter 6. The Spirit was listening to us earlier, brother. Who was explaining just how we're going to take the kingdom? Right. You got, like I said, you got to open down and listen, brother. We're going to give it an answer right now. Ephesians chapter 6. What is that? You read that verse. Book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 26. Bring it out. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, the, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So guess what? You, you said Christ is not going to rule with us. I didn't say Christ did. I didn't say that. I see. So Y'all are not gonna rule. Christ rules. He gives the kingdom to God, and the saints complete the action. So you are servant. What scripture? You're how, about, servant how, how about this? Let's stop. Let's stop the talk. Revelation. What scripture? Exactly. Revelation. Uh, Revelation. Revelation. You started Revelation one to read the twenty two. That's too much reading, brother. It's not too give much me, reading. Give me a clear cut scripture. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a digress and go back to what I, I was I, I, okay, about. I, I, Give me Ephesians right. chapter 6. So I'm going to go back and answer the question of how we're going to take the king. So we're going to deal with scripture. We can't just go back and forth dialogue. If you have a Bible, please bring out the scriptures. We, we, can, we can completely debate our cause, like the scripture says. If you got a cause, please bring forth your evidence and produce it. Don't just speak it to me. All right? Yes, sir. Read what you got. Now listen to this. Uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 11, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Did you hear that, brother? You weren't paying attention. Yeah, what did you say? Spiritual wickedness high places. Ephesians 6 and probably 12. What, what did you say? Wrestle against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. So how do we take this king? How do you take the kingdom? You actually have to be programmed or mentally stable enough to understand what What's Jesus scripture? is. 
what Jesus' principalities and what God's principalities are. So what is because what you is Jesus wrestle, principalities? Because you wrestle with his oh, no. principalities. What is his principalities? His principalities is you to serve God and have no other God before him. What does it mean to do love that? Love thy neighbor as thou love thyself. Mean? Even as, and even, hold on, brother. Even as hold on, hold on. Time you. out, brother. Time out. I'm telling you. You're telling me, but you're not producing any scripture. So I'm going to pause you yeah, and explain yeah, what you just said. You yeah, said, hold on, brother. Stop me hold on, brother. Hold on. You on that platform, let us dialogue properly. Let's not speak That's over one another. So you just said you got to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul, right? Give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. I'm going to go to the Bible and explain what you just said. Because you can speak all you want to do. Hey, man, hold, hold, if you can explain what I just said about the Bible, then you're listening to me. And Listen, you can brother. actually have the evidence. We're not here to <laughs> argue with you. I know. We're here to dialogue. So listen while we bring out the scriptures, brother. It's simple as that. We're not trying, I'm not trying to come at you. I'm not trying to prove I got more knowledge than you, whatever. We can dialogue properly over the scriptures. Okay. So when I'm reading the Bible, you should be listening, paying attention. Right? Right. Uh, so you, I mean, you stay focused towards God. Read what you got. You already know what it is, brother. Been over the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then had the Jew? Verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true. Now let me be true. Let God be true. Let you be true. Let God be true. And every man what? But every man a liar. So guess what, brother? When you are not bringing scriptures to give evidence to your cause, guess what you are? You a liar. Right. what the Bible just said. I'm not doing that to knock you down. That's what the Bible just said. That's why I'm going to be able to go to you and speak scriptures to you, brother. You understand? You understand, brother? It makes sense, though. All right. Yeah. Should not go back to it. Elias, that's kind of what he said. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. So remember. You, I asked you, how do we really? Follow instructions. How do we really? What is sense. the principalities, right? What's the principalities? So read that again. But to fear the Lord thy God. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? What is your requirement to God, Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. So now we got to stop right there. What does it mean to fear God? You know what I want, 119, 120. What does it mean to fear God? We got to go precept upon precept out of the word of God. Not out of my mind, let me out of how to his mind. Hold on, brother. You got to let me finish my point, then I'm going to let you speak. Go ahead, man. All right. I, I got so, to to what does it mean to fear God? We're going to go out of the Holy Bible and explain to you what it means. Go ahead. Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. Yeah. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. And I am afraid of thy judgments. You are what? Afraid of thy judgments. So if you fear God, you're going to be afraid of his judgments. For doing what? For breaking his commandments. And right. So right. Fearful right. And I go back. Shall perish in fire and brimstone. Revelation. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear his judgments. To walk in all his ways and to love him. And to what? And to love him. You said love, you gotta love your God with all your heart and soul, right? Okay. So we gotta understand what does it mean to love God? Because people may think they can find a good old stairway to heaven and give God a box of chocolates and candy canes. That's what some people think, to be honest. Okay, what do you think? They think they can fly what do you think? on a plane and go straight to God. So we, we actually But you said, what do I think, people, right? Yeah. Let's see what God thinks. Read what you got. Bring it out. Book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Bring so it out. This is what it means to love God. You understand? Read. Uh, For this is see. the love of God. No, this see. might be. See. For this is the love of God. You hear that? Oh. Say, this is. You can't get no clear cut than this. God said, this is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. That we do what? Keep his commandments. So how do you love God, bro? Keeping All right. praise to the Most High. That's clear and cut, right. right? Now go back to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy souls. To keep the commandments. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. And that's just summarizing everything we just read. Everything boils down to God's commandments. Right. right. Honor his, honoring his Sabbath day. Not stealing. Not killing. This, that, and the third. 
All right, now give me that Isaiah 4421, right? You going down that way? 41. 21. Yes, sir. Because our people need to get this medicine. Our people love to give their own vain opinion, but when the word of God comes out, they got they always got something to say. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 21. Bring it out. Produce your cause. Do what? Produce your cause. Do what? Produce your cause, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, said the king of Jacob. See, God said, look, produce your, your cause with evidence, not with your own words. That's right. Because right. we are not here out here to debate people. We are not here to knock people down. If you want to understand the word of God, if you got humble questions, we will answer them right. according to the Bible. Not according to me. When it, comes to, when it comes to speaking the Bible, if I'm not reading the scripture, I'm a damn liar. Right. If, not, if I'm not bringing out God's word, I'm a damn liar. Right. So that's why I'm going to bring you scripture after scripture to explain everything that you need to be doing. All right? Now they will see the true mother of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.